Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to Morning Inspiration. The low music you hear in the background is the music that I borrowed from a person who I've come to converse with and I consider a fellow believer in Christ, uh, Carl Kohlhaus. Okay, before we go any further with Morning Inspiration, God bless you and good morning, sister. Evangelist Tom, Thomas, before we go any further with morning inspiration, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once more and again for another day that you have blessed us to see. I thank you for life, health, and strength. I thank you for another opportunity, Father. I thank you for this platform. Please word my mouth and give me what to say to these, your precious people. And Father God, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. In the name of your son, Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And today we have an exciting topic for you. It's called Use Your Voice. <clears throat> and we will be coming from the book of Matthew. But I also gave two other books as reference for this. They are also... The book of Matthew is where we will be coming from. Matthew, the third chapter, verses 1 through 4. You can also find that Mark, the first chapter, 1 through 7, and John, the first chapter, 19 through 23. So, the person who I'm talking about today, or that we'll try to stir up your pure minds with, is John the Baptist. So, let's read a little bit about John the Baptist. And it says, this is reading the Matthew, the third chapter, verses one through four. And it says, in those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Let's stop right there. And today I wanted to stir up your pure mind, and I wanted to talk about using your voice. We see here that John the Baptist was out in the wilderness and he was preaching a message. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. He was preaching a message about Jesus. He was telling others that Jesus was coming and they were to prepare, they were to get ready. And today I wanted to encourage you brothers and sisters to use your voice. Use your platform to alert others of the coming of Christ, to encourage those that are lost to repent while we can still repent. Okay, we look at John and we see a couple things going on with John. Number one, he was out in the wilderness, so he had separated himself. And we know that the Bible tells us to be ye holy, for I am holy. That's what God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And there is a way to be holy, and that way is by separating yourself. That's not isolating, but you separate yourself from things that are distracting. You separate yourself from things that will hinder you from being of use to the master. So when we see that John was separated here, we see that John was out there and he was focused. He had work to do, and he was using his voice to cry out in the wilderness to a sin-sick world. He was not out there talking about them or using his platform to just go off on them, as we say, or to try to call out or point fingers or make examples of, but he was out there telling them to repent, 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 repent. And that's the message that we need to share today, is we need to share the day that it's time to repent. It's time to come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you knew Jesus Christ and now you don't know him, 
It's nothing wrong with saying, I'm sorry, I, I backslid, Father, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I need, I need you, Jesus. I need your salvation. I need you. I believe that God sent you and raised you from the dead. And then the Bible tells us in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 8th through the 10th verse, if you do that, if you confess with your mouth, not in your mind, but if you confess with your mouth, that God sent Jesus and raised him from the dead, that you're saved. You have to confess with this, and you have to believe right here. Okay, that's what you do to be saved. We're talking about using your voice. We're talking about using that voice, using that platform. It's not just about popularity. It's not just about, hey, you know what? I, I thank God that you guys share the, 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 the messages that I, that I have. I really do, and I appreciate you, and I applaud you for that. But we are to be focused on building the kingdom of God. That is our number one goal. We are to expand the kingdom of God. We are salt and we're light. And we have to use our voice to be that salt and that light. We see that John was separated out there. He was out there so he wouldn't be distracted. He was out there preaching a message of repentance. He was out there challenging others to follow Christ. He was out there preparing the way for others to say, oh, we heard this. This is what John was preaching about. This is who John was preaching about. Okay? Number two, he had the right clothing on. So we're not, I'm not doing this to talk about clothing. I'm not talking about you need a three-piece suit to go to church. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about you need a three-piece suit to witness. But you need to have the right clothing for the job. And what am I talking about here? We hear that he had let me read it again for you about what he what his apparel was. Um, and it said right here. And the same John had his raiment, which meant his clothing, of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. So we see right here that he had the right clothes to do the job. He had some clothes that were going to hold up. It wasn't a popular looking outfit. It was more in the line of what the prophets had worn that came before him. They were, you know, outcasts because people didn't want to hear what the prophet had to say. The prophet was telling them what God wanted them to hear. He wasn't telling them you're going to get a new car. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed on this side, that side. The prophet was saying, you're doing wrong. You need to repent. Okay. I came here to warn you. You're doing wrong. You need to repent. If you do not repent, death is at your door. That's what the prophets were talking about during that time. You are hypocriting. You need to repent. That's what you need to do. That's what they were talking about. That was their message. And when they had this message, they, they weren't dressed in a three-piece suit or in some fine robes and all that. They were dressed so they could roll their hands up and go to work. They were dressed so at a moment's notice, they could be where they needed to go. They could travel. They could get dusty with what they head on and just dust it off and continue to do what they were supposed to do. They could continue to use their voice. We are to use our voice for God. We're to use our, our voice to tell people about, hey, you know, this is what's happening. Jesus is soon to return. We have to repent, 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 repent. And here, we lead them to how they should repent. That's how we use our voice. Okay, we use our voice by following a strict diet. Sometimes, you know what, it's okay to eat a little Texas Roadhouse. Me and the family ate some last night. But guess what? My diet cannot consistently be Texas Roadhouse. Sometimes I have to fast. Sometimes I need to just press in to the presence of God. Sometimes I need to hear a right now word from God so that I can be of better use to my family a better use to my wife, a better use to my brother, a better use to my sister, a better use to my, my Christian brothers and sisters, a better use to society. Society is looking right now for somebody to use their voice because they see a lot that's going on and it's a whole bunch of confusion. We are to use our voice to, to light up. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to reflect the light of, of Christ. So we should reflect that light that makes 
obstacles very clear. We are re to reflect that light, to reflect that love. Okay? That's what we have to do. And you see that his diet, he had a very, very different diet. Okay, he wasn't eating a whole lot of McDonald's, if you would allow me to just go ahead and, and make it plain. He would not go to the Outback. See, I, I hear you, Pastor Walls. He wouldn't go to the Outback. The Outback is all right. I like the Outback, too. But guess what? We can't always be at the Outback. We can't always be at Famous Dave's. We have to sometimes set ourselves apart for, with some prayer and some fasting. And we don't need to just fast for a little bit. We need to fast until we hear from God. Now, I know when we have medical conditions, sometimes I need to eat at certain times too. But we should do as long as we can and really, really press in towards God. That's what it comes down to. It's not necessarily the time that we fast or how long or whatever, but it's the quality of the fast. We need to be about quality. Quality over quantity. I don't want to just do something to do it and it's not any quality in it. I need to use my voice to share with others my experiences. Guess what? I've fallen. Okay? And guess what? God is a God of second chances. We need to use our voice to let people know that God is a God of second chances. God is a God of love. We need to use our voice to tell people when they're hungry. That, guess what? You can eat some of this word and it'll fill you up. We need to have a meal that's not just natural, but we need to have a spiritual meal. We need to understand and we need to convince others and we need to compel others that there is a spiritual man that needs to be fed too. We need to use our voice to go ahead and let people know the goodness of God. Okay, I am reminded of the late Dr. Martin, King, Martin Luther King. He had a message that he called the drum major instinct. And that was the me message that was very popular that where he said, have I helped somebody along the way? Have I showed somebody when they were going wrong? Oh, have I helped somebody? And he, he ended his message with, then my living will not be in vain. We have to use our voice today, brothers and sisters, to let people know that guess what? Our living is not in vain if we've led someone to Christ. We have to use our voice to let people know if we've shared the love of God that our living is not in vain. We have to use our voice to let people know that, guess what, our message is different from the world. Our message is not like the world's message. The world's message says get all you can, can all you can get, and sit on the can. The world's message is a selfish message. Oh, if I have and you don't have, I got mine, get yours. No, the message that we have is a message of hope. We have a message that, guess what? For God so loved the world. Okay, John 3.16 said, for God so loved the world. He so loved the fallen world. The world that we live in right now is fallen. And God so loved it that he had to do something about it. He was driven to action. He so loved his creation that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever. Oh, see, right now we need to start talking about the whosoever instead of just the, the whatever. Okay, it said, the whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I know a lot is going on right now. I know it looks like racism is just on the rampage. But if you really think about it, racism has been going on since you and I were born. It's been going on since our parents were born. It's been going on since their parents were born. It's been going on, if we kept going back, racism has been going on for a long time. But what we have to do is we have to conquer hate with love. We have to use our voice to let people know, you know what, I hate your sin, but yet I love that you have a soul. Because the Bible tells us that all souls are God's, and the soul that sinneth shall die. We want to tell that soul that, you know what, you don't have to sin anymore. And you know what, sometimes you might get off the path, but guess what, you need to ask God for forgiveness. We need to use our voice to teach others. We need to use our voice to correct in love. We need to use our voice to go ahead and let people know, you know what, you can make it. We need to use our voice to encourage instead of discourage. 
We need to use our voice to let people know that there is a heaven and that there is a hell. And your goal is to miss hell and make heaven your home. We have to use our voice to tell them that it's not always going to be easy. But guess what? In the end, we'll understand it by and by. We have to use our voice to go ahead and, and shine light on dark situations. We have to use our voice when one who is a brother or sister in Christ has been overtaken in a fall. We have to use our voice to restore them in love. We have to use our voice to move beyond the situation we're in. We have to use our platform. We have to use our voice in the right way. We have to use our voice as a good servant. We have to use our voice. We have to use our voice telling people that Christ is soon to return. We have to use our voice today. And today I just came by to stir up your pure minds because we see that John is talked about in the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Mark, and the gospel according to John. We don't really hear any mention of John out in the wilderness in the gospel of Luke, but that's okay because we get enough in the books of Matthew, Mark, and John. And we know that when we see this, we see that he was out there preaching in the wilderness. Okay, he didn't have all the conveniences of the temple. He didn't have probably a comfortable place to do. But yet he was out there using his voice. He was described as one crying in the wilderness. We need to be described as somebody in this wilderness, in this sin sick world, in this fallen world, this chaotic wilderness. We need to use our voice to say, you know what? You can do better than this. You know better. Let's do better. We can use our voice to say, you know what? Jesus still saves. He saved in 1968, the year I was born. He's still saving in 2020. We can use our voice to tell others that, you know what? We're in a pandemic, but God is over the pandemic. We can use our voice to let people know that, you know what? I love you and I'm thinking about you and I'm praying for you. We can use our voice to encourage others, to inspire others. We can use our talents for the master's work. That's what we can do. God bless you and good morning, Sister Tyler. We can use our voice today. You know what? We can use our voice. We can use the fruit of our lips to, to honor the master. We can use the fruit of our lips to praise God. Oh, we can use our voice today. That's all I came by to tell you today. I came by to stir up your pure minds and let you know that we can use our voice. We don't want to misuse our voice. We want to use our voice the correct way. We want to use our voice to proclaim the good news, which is the gospel, which says that Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived and walked on the earth and had a ministry, and then he was nailed to the cross. But after three days, he got up. And he went back to heaven, but he's coming back again. We can use our voice to tell the blessed story. We can use our voice to share our testimony. Oh, yes, we do have a testimony. God has done something for all of us. We can use our voice to let people know that we know him as a healer. We can use our voice to let people know that we know him as a friend. We can use our voice to let people know that he was our doctor in the sick room. We can use our voice to let people know that he's been my lawyer in the courtroom. We can use our voice to let people know that he is the potter that wants to put us back together again. We can use our voice today. And I encourage you and I challenge you today to use your voice, to use what God has placed in you, okay? To use it. It might not always be popular. We see that John was not popular because he was out in the wilderness talking about repent, repent. Re when people hear the word repent, nobody wants to hear about repenting. We always want to be right. And that's just naturally in our fallen nature. We have a nature to want to be right. Sometimes we'll argue and we don't have a ground, we don't have a, a leg to stand on, as they say. But we are determined to be right. Okay, we can say it, it's hot out, somebody will say it's hot outside, it ain't that hot because it's not a certain degree. That's not what the subject was. The subject was it's hot outside. You can just agree. If you don't agree, you don't have to say anything. Sometimes we need to learn how when we're using our voice, sometimes we don't need to say something. Sometimes we should just listen. Sometimes we should just be still. We don't have to say something all the time. 
But when we have something, we have to say, use our voice. Okay, right now, we want to pause because I see that we need a prayer request. We are going to pray for Brother Amos Gilmore. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for this time, for this platform. I ask right now that you touch Brother Amos Gilmore. Father God, you know what he has need of even before we ask, but we're standing in the gap right now, Lord. We're coming together and we're praying for him, Father. Lord, you said where two or three are gathered together in your name, Lord. And we have the number right now because I see with the video with the video that it's two plus me, that's three. We are gathered in your name, Father. We're not here doing foolishness. We're gathered in your name. We're asking right now that you touch Brother Gilmore from the crown of his head, Father, to the soles of his feet, Lord. Lord, we ask that you restore him right now, Father. Whatever is going on right now, Lord, we ask that you work it out like only you can, Lord. Lord, you are the problem solver, and we thank you right now, Father, for showing up and showing out, Lord. Lord, we know when you speak the word, Lord Jesus, that instantly it's done. We ask right now that you speak your word, Father. Lord, you are the word, Lord Jesus, and we ask that you just speak the word, Father. Oh, speak the word, Lord Jesus, and, and raise him up right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, for what you're doing with Brother Amos Gilmore, Father. Lord, we thank you right now, and we give you the praise, Father. Lord, on morning inspiration, we're here to inspire, Father. We're here to pray for each other, Father. We're here to encourage each other, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this one day a week, Father, but we can do a lot in one day, Lord. Lord, and we thank you right now for this time. We thank you for prayer, Father. Lord, we thank you for this prayer request, Father. While we're praying, Father, I ask that you touch each and every one who is watching this video, Father. I, I ask that you touch each and every one that shares this video, Father God. Lord, I ask that you compel those who are unsaved to say, what must I do to be saved, Father? Lord, I ask that you encourage and you you inspire the ones that are already saved, Father. Lord, I ask that you speak to them in a special way today, Father. Lord, I ask that you show up and show out like only you can, Father. Oh, we thank you right now. And I partner with Evangelist Thomas. And I partner with Joy Tyler. And I partner with Sister Hemphill. That we are speaking those things as though they are. We're speaking healing because there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And we are speaking life this morning. And we speak life more abundantly. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you're, you're, you're a mighty God. And we thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Oh, and right now, as, as we're closing, as we're wrapping up Morning Inspiration, this is what it's all about. When you have, good morning, good morning, Sister Hemphill. When you have a prayer request, please just type it in the thing and, and, and we'll pray. I don't need specifics. I just need the name and the person that needs prayer. And we'll go to God in prayer. Because it's told that we can boldly approach the throne of grace. And that's what it's all about. It's all about loving on each other. It's all about caring for each other. And it's all about doing better than what we were doing before. That's our goal. Our goal is every day to do better. Not go back, but do better. Let's press towards the mark. Let's press towards the mark together. Let's encourage each other. Let's love on each other. Okay? Let's, let's do it. We can do it. We can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. It's not about us. It's about Christ. And I just wanted to stir up your pure minds this morning. And we do have a new time. We do come on every Wednesday. I'll be on every Wednesday at 6 a.m. And sometimes if the Lord moves on me, I will be on on Saturday. So that's that's the new time format. It will be 6 a.m. And we'll stay as long as, you know, the Lord gives us strength during that Wednesday time frame. And then sometimes it will be on Saturday. And I just wanted to encourage you, if you're saved, God bless you. And guess what? I know sometimes it gets hard, but you can make it. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. And if you're unsaved, I challenge you, I compel you right now to get saved. How do you get saved if you're unsaved? It says it in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It says that, and then it tells us in Romans 10th chapter, the 8th through the 10th verse, it says, If you confess with your mouth that 
God sent his son Jesus and raised him from the dead that you shall be saved. We have to confess with this. We can't just think it up here. It's okay to start thinking, I need to get saved. Yes, you're doing the right thing, but now you got to open your mouth and you got to say, I'm a sinner. Lord, forgive me. That's what we have to do. Okay, because you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. And that's what it comes down to. We have to press towards the mark of the high call. Amen, Sister Tyler. That's what it comes down to. And with this morning inspiration, we want to kind of set the atmosphere, if you would. We want to encourage each other. And this is Wednesday, and they said Wednesday is hump day. So sometimes we need a little help getting over the hump. Is that all right? Okay, that's what it comes down to. God bless you too, Sister evangelist thomas god bless you god bless you god bless you i thank god for you because you've always been an encourager god bless you and that's what we have to use our voice for we have to use our voice to encourage that's what it comes down to it's easy to discourage but it takes some effort to encourage let's be encouragers today in the name of jesus let's encourage each other to go a little deeper to dig a little deeper to press a little more let's let's do that and as I always like to say, God loves you and so do I. You be blessed on this Wednesday because this is a day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it because God made this day and we thank him for all things. God bless you. And as I, as I like to say, God loves you and so do I. You be blessed.